What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sex Street. I hope you're all having a very good day today. It's New Comic Book Wednesday, and normally I would have dropped my video uh, for New Comic Book Day and the New Comic Book Day reviews, but you know what? Hey, it was a busy day. Uh, yesterday, we got a lot of comic books to talk about today, and also this week. Remember last week? Remember when we were kind of unaware of that DC round robin? Well, round two happens this week, and we're going to get on, and we're going to put in our votes for this week. And oh man, what a week it was. You know, it's kind of crazy. I don't remember uh, seeing anybody really talking about this last week. Like, And then we got on, I was doing the live stream uh, last week, uh, doing the round robin thing, uh, talking about it, going through there, and we went through there. You guys remember we went through there as as a community all together we got on there and I put in my votes. I hope you got out there and put your votes in there as well. Now, the thing is is <laughs> shortly afterward, after that stream, I noticed a lot of people out there talking about this DC round robin. Um so yeah, I I don't know. I just thought it was uh, all kind of interesting. Let me see if I can Is that a little bit better there? That might be a little bit better. But uh, yeah, so we're going to get on and make sure that we uh, that we put in our votes for today and make sure that you get on Twitter and, you know, go check out yours. Also, before we get into today's comic book reviews, I want to let you guys know, don't forget it's Wednesday this uh, tonight at uh, I, usually he goes at five. He used to go at six. Now he's going at, at Pacific Standard Time. Uh, but, you know, I think last week he went at 530 um, p.m. So go to Fanjecture. I just dropped a link for his channel, and uh, they're in the or in the in the comments section, and I pinned it there. Go check out Fanjecture. You guys got to go check them out. Go get involved in the show. It's always fun to get in there and cast your vote for your favorite movies. I'm not sure who he's doing this week, but because I, I didn't see the link, but I guarantee you he's got a good uh, live show ready to go for everybody. Last night on the Den of Nerds Live, he did his show. Uh, there where they were talking about uh, the greatest, you know, uh, they were debating the greatest, the top eight movies or the eight things coming out of the MCU uh, here in this this next phase. And uh, yeah, it was a pretty good one. But wait till tonight when we actually get on there and we're going to be talking about some other films. Make sure that you go check out my man fan, Jack and go subscribe to him. Absolutely great channel. Speaking of which, and I'm telling you this also because I want to give a huge shout out to Star Wars Santa. Who was uh, recently? A, I, I I don't know. I wasn't aware of it. I didn't I didn't see it. Uh, I was on uh, stream with Josh from the Den of Nerds and Star uh, Star Wars Theory. They were there uh, on a live stream on Monday night. Santa came in and dropped some knowledge. He did what Santa does, and he went from like what it was like three hundred subscribers or something like that. I don't even know if it was three. It was like two hundred. He shot up. To over a thousand. Congratulations, Star Wars Santa. You know what? Honestly, uh, Star Wars Santa is one of those guys out there that he's a great dude. You need to check out his channel. He's he's awesome, and it's great to see uh, him get there. And I want to see my man Adam from Fanjecture get there as well. It kind of reminds me of uh, another uh, another friend of the channel here that uh, that it seems like it took him way longer to hit that thousand than it should have. And that was my man Lord Callus. If you guys have never heard Lord Callus and you like Star Wars. You probably need to go check out his channel. He's absolutely great. He's the. F I almost did it. I almost. Did it. He's the man. You got to go check out his stuff. Great stuff. Um, but yeah, it's great to see uh, so many uh, gr gr great creators out there. Uh, you know, com coming up. And Santa is definitely one of those. And we need to get my man Adam there because he's, dude. His show's great. It's fun. It's interactive. If you like movies, at all. You should be subscribed to his channel and being over there watching Debate 8 and partaking every single Wednesday night. It's one hour of a lot of fun. But So anyway, Zack Snyder. Okay, tonight's Debate 8 is Zack Snyder. All right, all right. Good deal. And let's see who all we got here. We got Spencer in the chats. We got Patricia Hirzel as well. One of the Myrtle Maniacs. Yes, thank you so much for being here. And my man, Will Morgan. What is up? Dude, I forgot to, retu I forgot to return uh, your, your message yesterday. Sorry, just a little bit busy with, with everything. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my comic book pull list and some comic book reviews for the week. We've got about eight minutes until DC drops that new round robin on us. So let's go ahead and get right into this. Starting off, we're going to start off here today with uh, a Blaze Comics. Uh, this is the Sumerian Iron Shadows of the Moon. In the Moon. In the Moon? In the Moon, 
Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This is uh, published by Ablaze Publishing. Um, this particular book is the writer and artist is Virgine Augustine, and it's adapted from the work of Robert E. Howard. The letterer is Desi Cienti. The cover artists are Brian Lavelle, and that's the cover I've got here. Uh, Virgine Augustine is the cover artist on a variant cover. We also got Kajo Bal Baldissimo and Fritz Casas. Uh, I'll show you those names right there. And I'll tell you right now, um, if you like, if you like Conan, the Sumerian, you need to be reading this book. Um, this is currently, God, what was this? One, two, three, four. Uh, this is probably like the fifth uh, volume, little uh, mini story arc that they have done. They do these issues in three issue story arcs. They, uh, each one of them has been three issues. They've currently gone through two volumes. I've got the, uh, I did a review. Uh, I've got the, the collected volume one, which had six issues in it. It's in a hard it's in a hardcover uh, bound book. It's a very nice book on a Blaze Publishing, and uh, very very great stuff. Uh, volume two has basically already come out. It had a it had two different storylines in it as well. This is the kickoff of volume three, and every single one of these volumes they have changed writers and artists. And uh, last the last two were really great. Um, and this one right here is starting off really good as well. Uh, where we see at the very beginning here, um, we see this this woman who is running, who's running uh, from this uh, from this this soldier. We don't really we don't really know who he is. It turns out that he's like uh, it seems like he's like one of the like the one of the kings here uh, of, of this kingdom, right? And uh, she's she's running away from him. Well, what we find out is she ended up uh, leaving because she was a slave. She was actually sold to uh, this king as a slave uh, to, you know, from by her father. And because she wouldn't marry um, this certain prince. And so she, so she ended up, uh, she, she took off running. She, she snuck out and they ended up, you know, the army, you know, went up uh, chasing after her. Well, in the meantime, uh, his armies, they had, uh, you know, she, she snuck out while they were uh, reveling in their victory after defeating um, these people. And these people actually happened to be somebody that Conan was actually uh, there battling with. And he ended up uh, sur surviving and he ended up uh, sne sneaking away. And, uh, you know, he got, he got away. He was basically like living in the swamps, you know, like, like, like cowering down, you know, just keep to stay alive and get away. Uh, while you know, just, just through all of that. Well, he comes across her as, uh, he, th he was, she, this, uh, woman was being tracked down and he ends up, you know, brutally, <laughs> he saves her, but he ends up like brutally murder, murdering, uh, this dude in, in the meantime. And he was, he was the king apparently. Um, so they've got some people after them. And it's been a very uh, great series so far. I'm telling you, if you like Conan and you want like, like, look, I, I'll be honest with you. I haven't read none of that Marvel Conan stuff, but I'm telling you, there, there's no way that it's better than this. This is Conan being Conan. He's being a man. He's getting down. He's getting dirty. Look at this. Look, look, look what he's got right there. What does he have right there that you're not going to see? You're not gonna see on you're not gonna see this on one of the Marvel books. That's right. He's got a woman in his arms. Huh. Right? <laughs> he, he don't have a boyfriend in this one, okay? This is Conan doing Conan shit, okay? This is what you sign up for when you want a Conan book. I'm telling you, issue number one here of Iron Shadows in the Moon is absolutely great. It's got some fire-ass covers that you should actually go check out as well. But let me know down in the comments below if you have ever read Ablaze Comics, The Sumerian. Let me know down in the comments below. Now, moving on into Aftershock Comics. This one is uh, Miles to Go, issue number one. For this book is being written by B. Clay Moore. Stephen Molnar is the artist and colorist. Nova Lee Fortier is the colorist, and Dave Sharp is the letterer or color assists is Nova Lee Fortier. Um, Stephen Molnar is on the cover. Dave Sharp on the logo design. Mike Martz, the editor, right here. I'll show you those names now. 
And we'll see a little bit of the art there in this book as well. Let me check some of that out. Um, this book right here is about this uh, this woman who was actually uh, caught uh, or no, like like caught up in this uh, game, and she became an assassin when she was a young girl. And she's an adult now. She has a family. She's not really out there doing. Uh, she's not living that life anymore. Well, what she finds out is this: that life comes back to find her while she's with her daughter. She's been uh, split up with her with her husband, uh, her baby daddy at this point. But uh, so she's kind of been going on this thing as there have been some people out there trying to kill and murder her. Um, and you know, by that sense, they're probably going to go after her daughter too. We know we know how it is. You don't want to leave anybody uh, around for, uh, to get revenge later. Um, so here, uh, you know, we got one issue left here. Uh, this story has been kind of been uh, been hitting its climax. We learn a little bit more about the character, uh, the, our main character that she's uh, she's been writing with, the guy who helped save her. She don't really know who he is. He's been learning about his past and catching up with his daughter that he never knew. Of course, you know, there's a little bit of drama behind all of that as well. And I think there's still a little bit more to be revealed here, actually. Uh, but I thought issue number four, Miles to Go, was very good, kind of progressing this story along. Uh, let me show you a little bit more of the uh, the art in this book. I've, I've really enjoyed, like, how some of this drama is coming. I think this right here kind of really sums up a lot of uh, what you're going to get in the art in this book and everything. Uh, again, this is one I've really enjoyed. Now, for whatever reason, I don't know, this book has been um, delayed at times. You know, who, who knows what happens, you know, especially here over this this last year. Um, but issue number four here, we got one, one issue left. I've really enjoyed this story. But let me know down in the comments below if you have read Miles to Go and what you think of it. We've got my man Lord Vito with a $5 super chat. Says Zemo fist pump for the win. <laughs> yes, we had here. Let me give you a, let me see. Can I give you a, can I give you a Zemo fist pump? Yeah. <laughs> Let Zemo get it, man. Oh, thank you so much, Lord Vito for that. I greatly uh, appreciate that, man. Okay, now the next one we've got here is on Antarctic Press. This one is Death by Life, issue number one. Now, I got to tell you, Antarctic Press puts out some pretty nice books, and they put out some uh, really great titles here. The quality of the books is good. Um, like, you probably can't hear that, but it's, it's a pretty heavy cover. Um, and, and the pages in here as well, they're usually some, uh, pr like some pretty good stock that they use on this. Now, Death by Life. The story is by Anthony Zakari, art by Claudio Sepulveda. Special, special thanks to Steve Furchow um, on the cover coloring assist. I'll show you those names right there and you can see um, some of that cover art right there or some of the art there inside the book. Now, this book right here, uh, I couldn't remember if I had this one on my pull list or not, uh, but I'm glad that it was. And I'm glad that my LCS ended up getting this in. This book is kind of following um, death as he's going, you know, just observing people, um, waiting for them to for them to die, and you know, so he can do his thing. And how he's kind of, you know, does he intervene a little bit? Maybe just a little bit. Maybe he indulges a little bit to help push people along, right? You know, to for his clientele. Well, here we can see, um, here, I got to show you some of this art right here. Like, check this out. Check out some of this art right there. Um, yeah, can you see that good enough? Yeah, got a little bit of a glare there, huh? But yeah, check that out. Really good stuff here. Um, we can see that he's going through this life and he's even observing some of these things going on that humans do. And like, man, like, like there's just like some really tragic stuff that's going on here. He's like, I don't like seeing this stuff. Um, we see as he's going through observing these people and this relationship of these people in this uh, st in, in this story where we see like this uh, woman, she ends up uh, going to the, going to the club. She's doing some drugs. She ends up uh, having uh, a fling with this guy. She ends up getting caught by her boyfriend. Um, uh, and basically, uh, they had a kid together. It was probably her husband. And 
so you know they have a kid together and just how the kids affected and everything um this kind of sad situation it actually kind of reminded me of a book we're going to be covering here very soon isadora and the immortal chains it kind of reminded me of that where he's observing this he's like look man he's like i pr like i i'm all about death i love you know like uh and he's also talking about like why would god give them these people, these undeserving people, this precious thing called life, and look what they do with it. He's talking about this sad situation. Um, it's very, just a very good, uh, just a very good uh, book, very good book, uh, talking about some, just kind of dealing with some real world issues and some real world shit, and I really do enjoy that. And the art in here um, is very good as well. And also just dealing with the repercussions of our actions and things and things like that. I thought it was very good. Um, I believe this, I can't remember how many issues this is, but this book is absolutely great. I like the art in this book. Now, I will say that I think um, maybe in some sections here, you can tell it's somebody who is uh, probably non-English speaking or maybe their second language, I guess. Maybe English is their second language because some of the things in here, the way things are worded is definitely very, um, well, it's written in English, but you could you could tell like certain things the way certain people say things, um, and you can tell that with with the creators here in, in some of the language. But other than that, like it's nothing that you're like gonna not understand it, and it's not like typos either. You get to cut out sentence like it's like typos. It's not typos. It's just the like a little bit of a language barrier. Very good book. I absolutely love this book. The quality, again, of this book is very good. Again, that's Death by Life. And you guys know, I love a good horror story um, and horror books. And here, I don't know, it's not necessarily, it's got some, it's dealing with some very adult themes and it's kind of got some graphic stuff in there. Um, very, just very good book. But let me know uh, down in the comments below if you have had a chance or are going to read Death by Life. Uh, let's see, we've got... Uh, my man Lord Vito with a twenty dollars super chest says, "Can you send me uh, send me some gift baskets? I don't I, I don't want to revel your secret identity, reveal your secret identity, but you are the peanut peddler, aren't you? Yes, yes, Lord Vito. I just need um, I just you just w message me. I just, all I, I only need one thing from you, and we'll and I, I have it ready to go, ready to send off, ready to send off." We got you, Lord Vito. Um, RFS Dan with a $5 super chest as I enjoy your comic book talk and your, your stream looks great. Thank you, Dan. Uh, guys, you got to go check out my man RFS Dan too. Uh, this is a, uh, a guy I know. He does a trivia show on Saturdays and he's been doing a lot of bakings and stuff. So does some play along with some games. And dude, and you got to go see Dan. Dan's it's fucking hilarious, dude. All right. Dan's a fucking awesome guy. This is a guy I actually know in real life. Yeah, he's an actual, an actual, you know, YouTuber I know in real life. Yeah, some of us know each other in real life. Like, real life in real life, right? Thank you so much, RFS Dan, for the $5 super chat. You're the man, dude. Thank you, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Now, um, moving on in uh, our books uh, today. How much time we got? Oh, it's 9.06. Hold on. You know what, guys? Maybe we need to take a break. Maybe we need to take a break here. And go and get here into this DC round robin. What do you think? You want to go get into this DC round robin? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's check out this DC round robin and what we've got going on here. Um, <clears throat> all right, where are we at here? All right, here we go. Let's get into this DC round robin. See what we've got going on here. Uh, Twitter guys, go here. Look, I'll, I'll put the I'll put a link in here. Uh, look, all right. There, there's the link right there. Go to the go to uh, the disc uh, the uh, the DC Comics Twitter. You can go on their Instagram as well. I think they got it on their Instagram stories. They got it on their Instagram stories as well. But uh, go there and let's get in here and uh, put it put in our votes uh, for this week. Surely, they, surely they've posted this already. Um, let's see. I need to need to refresh this. All right. Oh, did they not do it already? Last week they did it at nine o'clock. Do you see? Are you not on it or something? What's going on? Does it go for two weeks? Maybe it goes for two weeks. Maybe it goes for two weeks. Uh huh. The final, no, it's got the final results on there. So when's the next one? When's the next one? 
I thought it was supposed to be this week. I thought it was supposed to be this week. Is that what they're doing? Is it? <laughs> they got all the they got all the votes they needed last week. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Latest. I don't know. I don't see. I don't see. No. 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 I don't know. I guess it's not. I guess it's not. I guess it's not up and ready yet. <laughs> No, that's not what we need. Oh, oh. There we go. Come on. Come on, DC Round Round. What's going on? What happened? What happened? What happened? Maybe they're waiting till later or something. I don't know. Go behind the scenes. Small. That was on April fifth. That's that was yesterday, right? No, that was okay. Yeah, no, that was on Monday. <clears throat> I don't know, dudes. I don't know, dudes. We'll, ch well, I guess we'll check it. I guess we'll check back in a minute. I guess we'll check back in a minute. But while while we're here, while we're here, let's go ahead and see uh, who all we've got here and the, who else we, has joined the chats. We got my man Captain Pennsylvania. That's my man right there, dude. I was talk. I was telling y'all about if you like Captain or like uh, Conan, you need to, dude. That's my man right there. He loves. He absolutely loves his Conan. Oh man, yeah. All right, Captain Pennsylvania in the house, dude. I hope you're. I hope you're doing well, man. It's came in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Round them up. Um, let's see, Apex Comics. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Marvel Conan is not better. <laughs> Nice. Phantom Stranger says, I'm surprised that the intro still isn't still playing. <laughs> oh, 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 Phantom Stranger, you son of a... I know, right? You, <laughs> I tried to keep it... Dude, I tried to keep it short for you today. I tried to keep it short for you. Because believe me. Believe me when I say, I know. I completely understand. I know. I was just joking with you the other week. I hope you weren't upset. Obviously, you weren't. You're here, and I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you're not sensitive like that. <laughs> I'm sure you know. I was just kidding. But yeah, no. Thanks for being here. Um, so it's what Conan should be. Yes, Spencer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, come on, man. Barry Windsor Smith is uh, is a Marvel Conan god of a god of writers. A guy wrote Weapon X two. Okay. Oh, is that who's doing Conan right now? I don't know. Samirian is the real Conan. Marvel doesn't know if they have gold. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh man, Lord Vito. <laughs> <coughs> uh, surprises notifications didn't hit. Yeah, I know. What's up with that? Yeah, what's up with that? Why didn't I didn't I didn't see it come on neither? I don't know. Maybe it's maybe just being maybe just being like that. Let's see. Did it not come on? Have they not been coming up? Let's see. They're not coming up, are they? Look at that. Huh. There we go. Okay. All right. Finally. There we go. Um, aggressively relaxing. <laughs> My man says, there's two kids. There's two kids on earth. I am expecting to hunt, to hunt me down and uh, kill me eventually. It used to freak me out <laughs> earlier in life, but now I'm looking forward to it. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh man, I thought Noel was on the cover of the Death by Life there for a second. Oh yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that cover is pretty fire. That cover is pretty fire. Uh, Antarctic Press, uh, respect their fans. Yeah, they they put out some pretty good books, and I know they put out some of like the Timothy Lim books and stuff as well. Like the uh, what was it uh, Black Hops? Uh, they put out the Common America. Current Conan at Marvel is a joy. Um, the way they have used him during. The recent King and Black event has been so entertaining. I'll have to check it out. Like, you know, because I did, I haven't, I honestly really did enjoy him in Savage Event. I was just kidding, guys. I was just kidding, okay? I haven't read the, Mar the Marvel Conan, but I can guarantee you that Blaze is doing it better. But I, I, ha I like the Savage Avengers over at Marvel. Dude, this is a great book. It's a great book. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. 
I promise if a man makes his way through the internet like my father before me. <laughs> oh, man, you're cracking me up. Yeah. About good count. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Kendall, what is up, my man? Thank you so much for being here. Oh, man. Uh, waiting for him a couple days to realize he has DMs waiting for him. What? Who does? Oh, Vito? Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you? Oh, yeah. It depends on where you get me at. Like, yeah. You know what? Yeah. You know what? Like, because, like, on some things I don't have notifications on, and some I do. If it's on, if it was on Instagram, it should I should have I should have notifications on for that. I'm gonna have to double check them. <laughs> Goofy guy, the football team was losing, so I acted out in the bar with their permission. Oh, you acted out in the bar? Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so uh, how far is the stream? I don't know. What are we in about? It? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know, we might be about 20 minutes in or so. Maybe about 20 minutes in. But uh, since DC hasn't uh, gotten their round robin, let's get back into uh, some comic books. Let's get back into some comic book reviews here. Let's get back into some of those, all right? All right? Let's get back into some of those. Okay, so uh, last one we talked about was Death by Life. Uh, so let's get go ahead and get here into AWA Upshot uh, this week. Uh, what we've got here, we've got two titles starting with The Resistance Uprising, issue number one of six. This is the start of volume two of The Resistance. They're calling it The Resistance Uprising. It's volume two, essentially. But this book is written by J. Michael Straczynski. The artist is C.P. Smith. Snake Bite, Cor Snake Bite Cortez is the colorist. And Sal Cipriano is the letterer. And Raza is the cover artist. Mike Diodato Jr. is the cover artist. Now, uh, I'll show you those names right there. Mike, Mike Diodato Jr. actually did the uh, art in the first uh, series along with Lee Lowridge. Here, they have the artist C.P. Smith and color Snakebite Cortez who actually did the art and coloring on Archangel 8, which was one of the other titles that uh, initially AWA Upshot had launched with last year, another great series. Now, the, the, uh, uh, this right here, The Resistance, is kind of this, uh, the launch-off series of the Axelverse, or the shared universe over at AWA Upshot. And this book is actually really good. Uh, this actual issue right here seems like it's actually starting off a little bit better than The Resistance did. Or, um, yeah, the, the, fir the first volume. It seems a little more interesting. But maybe it's because we're uh, uh, over a year in now. Maybe that's why this seems a little bit more interesting. Because it was a little bit more um, to sink my teeth into. Um, we still get uh, a lot of the character likenesses. Like Har Harvey Keitel in here. Uh, as well as uh, Ed Harris. Uh, just kind of just some kind of funny stuff here. That they use like some of the character likenesses of. Uh, like you can see, like, look. Look at that. Tell me that's not Harvey Keitel. Right? Tell me that's not Harvey Keitel. I'll show I'll show you all of, uh, Ed Harris here in a second as well. Um, Ed Harris is in here, but I got to find the right shot of him um, because in here he looks a little bit different than he did um, in the first story arc. But that is due to uh, the artists as well. But one thing I got to say about this story arc is. Um, this issue number one seems like it's tying in more of the world around us because this book I actually feel like um, like it really tied into like erratic. I really felt like it kind of uh, gave us a little bit of a dive into uh, maybe kind of a little bit of a crossover to American Ronin as well as some insinuation that it was dealing with Archangel 8 as well. There was just some things that happened in here that made it seem like it was connecting all of those titles and bringing them in just a little bit closer um, with some of the things that happened in this story. Again, this is a great expansion into the AWA Upshot universe. If you have not read The Resistance or anything, you guys need to check this out. I've really been enjoying this series in so many ways. It's like, imagine like X-Men. Imagine, it's kind of like the X-Men and the Inhumans. It's kind of like that. But I got to be honest with you. It's a little bit updated and a lot a, a lot better. Um, and not updated and a lot better in the way that they've done those X-Men recently, right? You know what I'm talking about. Bobby Drake. Anyway. Guys, let me know down in the comments below if you've read The Resistance and what you have thought about it. Or if you've read any of these AWA Upshot titles. Very, very good stuff. Now... The next one we've got here is Casual Fling, 
Issue number three of four, written by Jason Starr with art by Dalibor Talajik. Um, it's got uh, colors by Mark Lesko. Steve Wands is the letterer. The cover artist is Danny. And Brad Simpson is the cover artist. I'll show you those names right there um, as well. Uh, check those out. You can check out that cover again. You can check it out there. Uh, now this book right here uh, has been a very interesting read right here. I'll show you some of the some of the art in here. Uh, now Dalibor Talajik is a is a good artist. I like a lot of the work um, that I've seen him do. He did the artwork in Hotel, which was a four issue mini series that was. Uh, one of the first titles that AWA uh, uh, launched with as well. Uh, very, very good book that was written by John uh, John Lees. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a great series. Uh, he's doing the art in here as well. I like his art style and what he's doing. You can tell he kind of like has, like, because I noticed like the some of the characters he uses, I noticed some of the faces from other books. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, um, we're not talking about, you know, this being like uh, like a Captain America and every, you know, across every uh, across every book, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like that that same likeness. Um, but but very, very good stuff. I like the art that Dalibor Talajik does and the books that I have read that I've seen him do. Um, the art the, or the story in here that Jason Starr is doing is very good as well. What this story is about is a woman who is a uh, business executive. She is a, a partner at this, uh, this law, I, I believe this law firm. And she ended up... Uh, going out, she met this guy at one of their corporate meetings, and um, she ended up having, you know, a one night stand with him. She had a fling. Well, it, he ended up kind of having going like all fatal attraction on her. But well, it turns out he is actually known for this. She actually uh, went through an issue number two. She confessed to her husband um, everything that had happened, and uh, you know, he got he got upset, obviously, and they kind of split up, and. Um, then now we see here in issue number three, she actually goes to her company, her partners, and says, hey, this all happened. Uh, I'm just telling you this because I just want to be open in case any of this comes out. And it's funny the way the, the, the story comes out because it is very kind of like how the world uh, would be where we see that her she's in there telling her partners about all this. And they're like, so, uh, yeah. And she got, she goes, oh, well, you know, I'm just letting you know, you know, cause so there's no surprise. And she goes, and, <laughs> and it's funny because like, like they kind of tell her like, look, keep your personal life to you. And like, we don't want to, and cause she was saying, cause there was a sex tape that this man had made. And she's saying, Hey, in case this, in case you guys hear about the sex tape and everything and this and that, and they're pretty much saying like, yeah, nah, it's just keep it to yourself. Um, but we also see here that uh, while her husband uh, is upset and has split up with her, she uh, he's actually going out doing what he can to kind of help her. And we see, uh, we learn a little bit more about this guy that is uh, pull, uh, did uh, she had this fling with and what he's trying to do and how he has actually done this to other women out there. Um, who have been in um, powerful positions at companies and things like that. Um, very good issue uh, here in Casual Fling 1. I definitely recommend, if you're into that kind of story. Um, just uh, very, very good stuff. But let me know down in the comments below if you've read Casual Fling and what you have thought about it. Now, the next one I've got here is one... I still have to read. I'm glad I got this one, and I wasn't sure if I had this on my pool list or not. But this is on Behemoth Comics. This is Carnivora. Now, this is a trade paperback. It was $12.99. You can uh, see uh, see right there. I haven't got a chance to read this one yet. It is pretty thick. You can see right there. Uh, $12.99. Um, pretty thick. And I got to say, I kind of flipped through, through here and seen uh, some of the artwork. It's all in black and white. But it looks very nice. Uh, it's got good clean artwork. The coloring in here and everything, or the coloring in here, is is done really well. Um, I want to. I can't wait to actually sit down and get the time and get this read. I'll probably have this read uh, by the end of the week. But this one has looked very good. Um, and Behemoth Comics puts out good quality books as well. Uh, I can't wait to get into this one. But uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments below if you uh, are, are planning on reading Carnivore. Uh, the next one I've got here, Boom Studios. Uh, I absolutely uh, love. This is The Last Witch, issue number four. I freaking love this book right here. It's written by Connor McCreary. It's got art by VV Glass, colored by Natalia Nestorenko, and lettered by the hardworking Jim Campbell. You can see all of those names right there. 
Um, and what this book is, is it's telling the story of this uh, young witch named Suarez. Suarez? Uh, I, I, I'm, pro I'm probably butchering, butchering her name. Where um, her, 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 mother, her mother is gone. She was uh, raised by her father. Uh, her father was killed um, while she was out uh, doing, the, uh, doing some adventuring and kind of uh, repercussions of something that she had done. And now she has to go out and fight these witches. And she's a young girl and she's just learning her powers. She's being guided by her, uh, her grandma who is actually... A, uh, a witch herself as well. And she's kind of training her along as she goes. She's getting powerful. In this issue, they actually come across this new character, uh, this elf, uh, this elf character, and he's there, kind of helping them. But they uh, still kind of suspect that he might not be as helpful as they think he is, or, or as he's uh, pretending to be. Um, again. I've absolutely loved this book. The uh, the art in this book has been just just great as well. I really love um, the art the art style in here, and just because like the the expressions on the kids in here throughout this book uh, are very good. The coloring is very good. The lines are clean, and again, it's a Boom Studios book, so you know it's got the it's got it's got a nice quality to the book as well. But the Last Witch is one of my favorite books that is out right now it's for kids it's on boombox it's their it's their kids line and i'm telling you this is a book that even adults can enjoy i'm telling you, i i i, I freaking love this book but let me know down in the comments below if you've read the last witch and what you think about it now the next one we've got here is origins issue number six of six this book is being written. Um, it's created by Arash Amel, Lee Krieger, and Joseph Oxford. The script is by uh, Clay McLeod Chapman. The art is by Jacob Re uh, Rebelka, and the colors by Patricio Del Pesh, and lettered by the hardworking Jim Campbell. I'll show you those names right there. You can see some of the artwork uh, in this book as well. And this is, you know, it's you get a, you get a lot of this kind of art style, kind of a kind of a gritty art style. I mean, it's definitely not for everybody. Got a very uh, indie look to it. Got a very indie look to it. Uh, this book has been very interesting in the fact that we see uh, it's about this man who created um, all these machines, these AIs and everything, and how it led to the downfall of civilization. Um, all these wars and everything happened. Man was pretty much it. He was the last man alive. And he created these uh, machines and they are all serving him and they want to keep him alive. They're trying to um, keep him alive and bring him back to life. And they want, you know, because they want to preserve man. They're there to serve man. And what we find out is there's also other uh, robots and AIs out there who want to see the downfall of man. They're, they're tired of seeing it. And uh, we see through the story, it's kind of, you know, where the robots here that are even serving man are want to be liberated, not just, you know, and that's kind of what's going on here is everything here. But there's a little bit more than that because there's a family connection here as well. And it all is all uh, pretty well wrapped up here uh, in issue number uh, six of six on Origins. Again, this is a story that's definitely not for everybody. Um, it's very cyberpunk and stuff like that. A couple of the issues really are driven by a lot of the art more so than actual language and storytelling going on here. So again, one that's not for everybody, but let me know down in the comments below if you have read Origins and what you have thought of it uh, so far. Now, the next one we've got here on Boom Studios is Seven Secrets, issue number seven. Okay, now, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is probably the kickoff of volume volume uh, two. Because I, I, I don't think it ended at five. I know the trade paperback just came out, I think, last week. Uh, this book is re being written by Tom Taylor, illustrated by uh, Danielle D. Niculo. Um, Niculo? Niculo? Niculo. <laughs> Um, colored by Walter Biamonte with color assistance by uh, Katia Renali and lettered by Ed Dukeshire. I'll show you those names right there. Ed Dukeshire does a lot of lettering um, for Boom Studios. Probably, probably works exclusively for them. You can see some of, um, some of that art here. Well, uh, what's going on here is um, there are these seven secrets that they have um, that they kind of keep guarded um, from these bad people. They're kind of the keys to the universe uh, to keeping humanity safe and the world safe um, from bad people. And they have these, uh, they have these, these keepers and these holders. And the, the, I think it's the holders um, hold the secrets and the keepers help keep the holders safe. 
and there's seven different ones. So basically, you got 14 different people guarding these these secrets. But this, you got this whole society dedicated to making sure these things stay safe, and that's what's been going on here uh, in Seven Secrets. But you can also see there's other things that go along with that too uh, to be part of this kind of secret society. Um, things you know, kind of like almost like the Jedi. You know, you, you can't have those emotional attachments and stuff like that. The families and all of that stuff. Well, you can see here that one of the kids here, our main character, actually is the love child of this couple who wasn't supposed to be together. You get the story, right? We've heard it a million times. Tom Taylor doing a good job writing this book. Um, I'm probably only going to be pulling this through the volume two and then I'll probably just uh, trade weight after that. But this has been a pretty good story. I've enjoyed it overall. Um, I gotta tell you though, I don't think it sells very much in my local comic shop. I don't know, is this, does anybody else read this book? Anybody else read this one? I, I don't know, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, because uh, again, I, my comic shop, I think we got uh, three issues of this in um, this last week. But of course that's not an indication that it's not good or anything that people aren't reading. I mean, um, there's plenty of titles that I don't see at, at my LCS that I go to the, the other one here in town, which yeah, I've been going to frequenting a little bit more and they have plenty of them. It seems like they sell to them. So I think it just kind of depends, you know, who knows? I don't know, but let me know down in the comments below what you have thought of Seven Secrets and if you have been reading it. Now, moving on. Uh, the next one that we've got here is on uh, Dark Horse Comics. This is Fear Case, issue number three, written by that really terrible guy that's into the NFT stuff, Matt Kent. Ugh. Ugh. Cancel Matt Kent. Um, it's got art by uh, Tyler Jenkins and colors by Hillary Jenkins here. And let me see, who who's on letters on this as well? Um, letters, letters, letters. It doesn't say. It doesn't say letters. But the standard cover is Tyler Jenkins, which is the one I have. Um, anyway, this book is about this case, and there's uh, this the the government's got this F uh, got the FBI. I think it's the FBI on this case where they're trying to uh, stock out this this fear case. You can see it like right there. This fear case is what it is. And they put new agents on this case for only one year. And then they're off the case and that's it. And um, it's just kind of a torch passed down. They're trying to get this case. But this case has this curse on it. And you're not supposed to look in the bag. You don't want to look in the bag. Don't look in the bag. Don't look in the bag. All right? And so, when you get this bag, when it gets given to you, you gotta go give it to the person that you hate the most within three days. And if you don't give it to the person you hate the most within three days, then it automatically, I, I'm pretty sure you probably die. And then it automatically goes to your loved one. It gets delivered to the person that you love the most, right? So, very interesting book here, especially uh, in, in issue number three. And I'm not sure if this is going to be one of those series that's just four issues or not, but it seems like it is because a lot happens here in issue number three. I've really been enjoying Fear Case uh, overall. Uh, but let me know down in the comments below. Have you been reading Fear Case? And what are your thoughts on it? Let me know down there in the comments below. Now, moving on, we've got, ooh, this next one's a good one. Um, on I don't read a whole lot of them, but this is... Heavy metal uh, comics. They're, they're heavy metal elements here. This is The Rise. Um, and you can see right there, this is written by George C. Romero. Now, I got, one thing I got to say about this is this book. Look, let's see if you can see that price tag right there. Look at that. Right, right. $2.99. Just like Spawn. Just like Spawn. Three bucks. Not $3.99. Not $4.99. Not $5.99. What is this? DC? <sighs> this book was written by George C. Romero. The artist is Diego Yapur. The colorist is DC Alonzo. And letterer is Saida Temafonte. Editor Joseph Illich. I'll show you those names right there. And don't act like you don't know who George C. Romero is. Don't act like you don't know who he is. You know you know who he is, you son of a... Anyway... Um, I'll show you some of the art in this book as well. This this right here pretty much sum, sums up the art you're going to get in this book. Uh, very good stuff here. Uh, you, and you can see they're not using a whole lot of colors, mostly black and white, using some, um, some reds through here as well. Um, what's going on in this story is kind of, uh, you see this scientist who is kind of uh, developing um, these biological weapons. 
and we see what they're trying to do with the biological weapons ends up leading to uh, basically like a zombie outbreak. And that's kind of what we get um, through these. I believe there's like two different little stories uh, in this book uh, as well. Two different little mini stories kind of leading up to uh, about this, um, this, this scientist and this, this, this thing that he's creating, this biological weapon. And it leading to basically, excuse me, a zombie outbreak. Again, I thought this book was very good. Now, I do want to say one thing because I was talking about that $2.99 um, price there. Now, uh, I'm going to tell you that right here when you get, you can see those staples in there, right? See the staples in the midway of the book? Um, this is where the story ends. Halfway through the book, the story ends. So, you know, it's not, it's, it's not, a, it's not a whole lot of pages. I didn't, I didn't even count the pages, to be honest with you. Um, two. Eight. Um, so you got eight pages uh, here of uh, story and art. So that's uh, 16 altogether, 16 pages. And then you got, you know, this little filler page. Then you got these right here where they got these files on here, where it's telling you a little bit more about some of the people involved in the story. And that's, you know, just a, a couple of pages uh, of those. So altogether, um, like almost half of this book is ads and bullshit in it too, all right? So you gotta think about that when you think about that $2.99 price. So at $2.99, you're not even really getting like a full comics book worth of pages here. But I gotta tell you, the story was pretty good. The art here was pretty good. $2.99. I think I'm in on this one. I think I'm in on this one um, for for the rest of it. Uh, I can't remember how many issues this one uh, was supposed to be, um, but $2.99, I'm not gonna gripe. Um, hopefully, maybe the next one, they'll put it $2.99 and not put all the bullshit ads in there. But I thought it was a pretty good book. George C. Romero, we all know. We all know what kind of writer he is. We know how good he is. Do I need to say anything more? Good book, good book, go check it out. Uh, now, moving on into Image Comics, uh, we have got uh, a new series here, Geiger, issue number one, being written, um, well, actually created by um, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. Uh, Brad Anderson is the colorist. Rob Lee is on letters. I'll show you those names right there. You can see those. Uh, now this story uh, was very good. The art in this book I thought was really, I think is really, uh, really good as well. You can see uh, some of the art in this book. Uh, kind of what we've got going on here is this story where uh, there is going, there's like the, a nuclear uh, fallout happening here. And there was, it looks like there was a scientist who had been doing some research and things like that, but also had a bunker as well because you know, we kind of knew some of the research that was going on. Well, it ends up there was uh, this, this, this town got nuked, right? And uh, the, like the, the, the country got nuked and everybody basically had to go underground. His family ended up uh, living in a bunker. He sealed his family away uh, in, in this bunker because what had happened uh, when after this nuke had, had went off, uh, he was trying to get everything, his family all together and get everything into this underground bunker. When um, his neighbors uh, came up, his neighbors pull up and they're like, oh no, like, they're like, you get the fuck out of that bunker. That's our shit, all right? And so he's like, no, no, no. So his family gets sealed in there. Um, and uh, for like 20 years, he ends up uh, he ends up living above ground in this uh, post-apocalyptic uh, world, you know, post-nuclear uh, devastation, uh, where, where we come across these people walking around in suits and everything. And, um, you know, kind of going through and checking out the world and uh, where, where we find out that the family is still living in this bunker 20, 20 years later. And uh, what we've also got here is tales uh, of a glowing man who is going out there and kind of protecting um, lands and people out there. So some very interesting stuff in this book. I thought Geiger issue number one was really good. Um, again, I'm not, you know, I don't know, you know, I'll read a whole lot of Jeff John's work or anything like that. No Gary Frank that well or anything. Um, Brad Anderson, that's a name I've certainly heard uh, a, lot, a lot with his coloring as well. But I mean, I know all of these names. I thought this book was very good. Uh, and it was this is a pretty thick book here as well. And again, it's, it's on Image Comics. And this feels like it's a little bit higher quality than most of the Image books. The cover feels a little bit thicker. And these pages... They feel about like the normal uh, image comics, but this cover is definitely a thicker cover on here. And this is the, uh, I think this is the cover, uh, the, the cover C 
variant on here as well of Geiger. Again, this is a very good book. Make sure you go check this one out this week. Uh, number one right there. But let me know down in the comments below if you have read or are going to be reading Geiger this week. Now, the next one we've got here on Image Comics, and another number one here is Silver Coin, issue number one, The Ticket. This book has different creators in it as well. I'm not sure. If, I think this one's a mini series. I could be wrong. Um, but it has, uh, it says in here, Silver Coin is created by Michael Walsh, Ed Brisson, Jeff Lemire, Kelly Thompson, and Chip Zdarsky. Um, this one is The Silver Coin. A curse needs to be... Uh, a Curse Needs to Feed, The Ticket, written by Chip Zdarsky, Lines, Colors, and Letters by Michael Walsh. I'll show you those names right there. I'll show you those names right there. All right. Now, I got to say, this book is very interesting. We see, uh, we get introduced to this band uh, back in the 70s who's playing this nice little, uh, this little club on Friday nights. This, you know, little gig they've had lined up for a while. They got a friend that runs the place. And while we see that things aren't going so well for them, you know, they're kind of telling like, hey, you got the opening slot. Like, rock's not hot right now. It's disco. And they're like, oh, hell no. We're not doing this disco gig. Um, we're not, we're, we're not doing this crap. Uh, well, what happens is um, they, they, they end up, you know, they're getting all trash, you know, drinking and everything. They're back at their, uh, at the, at the guitar player's house and they're going through some old, old stuff, some boxes that his father was getting ready to get rid of that was his mother's. Well, they end up finding that he ends up finding this little coin and um, they're, they're practicing one day and he don't have his pick. So they like, you know, his band men are like, just use a coin. So he pulls out that little coin. Well, it turns out that it brought him some luck. It brought him some luck. All of a sudden, their music is great. Everybody loves it. And they didn't change the music or anything. It's just great now. Everybody absolutely uh, loves the music at this point. And it becomes a, a big thing. All thanks to this, uh, all thanks to this, this coin. Well, what ends up happening is obviously the success starts to um, kind of tear this band apart a little bit. You can see it kind of grows between them. I thought this book was very good. Um, the art in here was very good. The story is pretty decent. What I've got in this issue, what I got to say though is like, look, okay. I mean, we all know, like, look, look at the, okay. Look at the pages. You know, look, I'm getting the next one. Okay. Oh, we got a green, we got a green, we got a green page in there. It's not all the bisexual coloring, which I have no color problem with the colors they, they do with, you know, the bisexual coloring, that the, uh, bisexual lighting, is that what they call it in the comic books? I have no problem with it. A lot, of, a lot of the colors I'm cool with, but like to me here, what's going on here is you can kind of see the theme throughout the book is they almost like there's this one page right here where the color scheme isn't all kind of the same. And I get, you know, it's kind of a gimmicky thing, you know, okay, we got some more. Got a little bit more, but I don't know. Like it doesn't have to be all that. It's okay. You can just do things normally and make it look. Oh, right. The stage lights, right? Is that what it is? It's stage lights. No. Um, and to me, it's just something that kind of, it turns me off of something that could actually be really great. Um, like I said, I have no problem with the use of, uh, when they use, uh, when they use that, the colorings or, or anything like that, but th there's a, there's a point where it's overused and it's really getting overused a lot in like everything. Another thing that's really getting overused a lot, probably even by Image Comics, and I've seen it in some other publishers as well, is like all of a sudden we're starting to see like all these comic book writers, they're like, hey, you know, like back in the, back in the, back in the nineties when I was growing up, I was totally in a band. I was in a band too. Oh my God, I was totally in a band too. I'm going to write a comic book about that. Hey, I'm kidding. It's okay. I mean, we write about our experiences and that's okay. You know, if you had that or maybe our dreams are what we aspire to. I thought uh, altogether, I thought Silver Coin was a pretty decent read and Chip Zdarsky is a good writer. I like Chip Zdarsky's writing. As a matter of fact, you guys know I don't pull Marvel books anymore uh, right now, except for like one title, but I'm actually, I've got that new Chip Zdarsky series, that Spider-Man one that he's doing, Spider-Man Shadows Web or Web Shadow, or you know what I'm talking about that book. It's on my pull list. I'm going to read that one because I like Chip Zdarsky. He is a good writer. He is a good writer. Uh, now, moving on into the last book that I have this week. Uh, we've got Titan Comics, Blade Runner 2029, issue number 
four. This is the last issue of this first story arc of Blade Runner 2029. This is written by Mike Johnson. Um, Andreas Guinaldo is on art, colors by Mark Lesko, and lettered by the hardworking Jim Campbell. I'll show you those names right there. Obviously, if you know the uh, the world of Blade Runner, you kind of know what to expect here with the humans, the replicants, all that kind of stuff uh, like that. This book all kind of takes place pre that first movie, right? Um, where we're, we've been following our detective, uh, Anna Ashina, as she's been going out trying to track down some of these replicants and find out what's going on. At some point, um, she ends up actually aiding some of the replicants as well. Uh, we're here. Uh, she's been trying to track down this uh, replicant in uh, Blade Runner 2029, trying to tr track down this replicant because something's going on here. Somebody's creating new replicants. There's not supposed to be new replicants. The thing's been scrapped. It's done. It's over with. But it's not. But it's not. And we can see here that there are plenty of replicants still out here. And one actually uh, goes through here uh, and at the very end of this issue. Actually, this this series actually ends on a climax. This, but like this is the end of this story arc. It actually ends on a high on a pretty high climax where we see that uh, the replicants actually make a pretty big attack on, I guess, U.S. or American soil. I'm not sure if they still consider it that uh, here in Blade Runner. Um, but they're in Los Angeles. Very good book. Uh, very great Issue, I gotta say, like this is probably one of the better issues that I have read out of uh, the Blade Runner twenty, uh, Blade Runner uh, twenty nineteen and twenty twenty nine series. I really thought this one was good. But let me know down in the comments below if you've read Blade Runner twenty twenty nine. If it's anything that you're interested in, I'd like to hear all of your thoughts. And then we'll get you here into the live chats and see what you all are saying. Let's go ahead and get in here. Let me ooh, let me just uh, bring that microphone over as well. So yeah, let's get in here and see, see what you all say, uh, see what you all have to say. And sorry, I've been flapping my gums here. We got we got to get through it. We got to get through it. Thank you guys so much for being here again. Make sure if you are here, make sure you hit that like button and make sure make sure you share this stream out with your friends. Tell them to come hang out if they like comic books and stuff. You know, I like them kinda a little bit, a little bit. Um, so uh, let's see, where were we? Apex says, uh, Trinity, uh, X-Men Legends is a uh, new good title. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, say, I know a lot of people have been talking about that. That's the one that's being written by, uh, yeah, 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 right? It's, yeah. Um, dude, why, why all of a sudden am I forgetting his name? Like, he's like, in, uh, Claremont, right? Is that the one uh, being written by, uh, Chris Claremont, if I'm not mistaken? But you can see the shine off that Avengers poster, um, pretty good from the light there, huh? You see that Avengers poster right there? Yeah, see how pretty good. Um, yeah. No, maybe I should maybe I should move that out of the way. It's kind of in my way. My coffee cup. Yeah, Cap changes the picture. It looks different. I know it throws me off. I've seen it in some chats and it throws me off. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where where was I? You know who I haven't seen? Where my boy, where my boy Jonathan Velasquez been? Maybe he's just been busy. Maybe he's just been busy. I haven't seen him. Haven't seen him. Uh, let's see. XR Coon is in the building. What is up? Oh, what? Wait, what? Hey, Lord Vito, what are you doing in there, man? You got a, you got your, you got your, uh, you got an extra account in there. I see you. I see you. Yeah, thank. Yeah, there you go, Patricia. Yeah, Mike, helping out with the announcements. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. No, I appreciate it, guys. I appreciate you guys being here. Freeman, what is up, my man? How are you doing? Parker is in the building. Um, I'm interested in origins. Uh, I love AI sci-fi and the art is beautiful. Well, Patricia, get at me. Get at me. Um, um, well, I'll have to get at you and uh, send me those deets, and we'll and we'll, you'll, we'll we'll get we'll get it to you so you can read it. We'll get it to you so you can read it. Um, I'm True Skills. What is up, my man? How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Is there a band called Jesus Was a Zombie? If not, there should be. I'm sure there probably is. There probably, <laughs> there probably is. <laughs> Zombies is a great '60s band. Yeah, as I say, I'm pretty sure. Uh, pretty sure I heard of the Zombies. Pretty sure I've heard of the Zombies. Um, Twenty, twenty years later, uh, wouldn't the canned goods expire? Hey, man, canned goods don't expire. Or something, right? Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, <laughs> who knows? I don't know. They said they had enough food out. To, they said they had enough food in the bunker to last a lifetime. To last a lifetime. 
Uh, Patricia says, an old friend of mine said when she was telling her son how Jesus came back from the dead, uh, he asked if that meant he was a zombie. I mean, well, um, technically, right? Oh, man, you think we have friends? <laughs> right? We're nerds. We're nerds. We don't have time for friends. Oh, man. We need a lot more people here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you know what? You know what? You know what, Mike? It's... I'm not as I'm not as I'm not as dramatic. I'm not so dramatic. I'm playing well. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we can fire it up. We can we can we can get the we can br we can bring in. Believe me, I can bring in people if I want. I can do the clickbaiting. I can get into like, I can do it. <laughs> but I would have way too much fun with it because like if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right. Damn it, I'm gonna do it right. Oh man. Yeah, I haven't seen John. Yeah, I know, I know. Maybe he's been busy. Maybe he's been busy. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, hopefully he didn't get caught up with that. Zemo Bispo! <laughs> hopefully, hopefully he didn't catch that, Z that Zemo fist pump fever. That Zemo fist pump fever. Zemo fist pump fever. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to message him. I'm going to message him, see what's up with Jonathan, man. Hope he's doing well. Hope he's doing well. But hey, we haven't heard from Cap in a while. We finally see him here. It's great. But guys, let's get back in here and see if this uh, see if this round robin is 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 up and if it's back up yet. Okay, we're we're uh, where are we at here? All right. Um, let's see. Let's see if they got this piece of piece of junk up now. No. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Dude, they haven't tweeted anything. Dude. Dude. Dude, oh maybe it, maybe it's through here. Maybe we got to go here. Um. Um. Okay. Okay. Thought we had. Oh come on, where's that? Round two. Oh, it's Thursday. Thursday, man, why are they do it on? Man, last week they did. It was on Wednesday last week. Do better, DC. <laughs> do, do better. You son of a, you sons of a motherless goat. You sons of a motherless goat. You have. Sorry guys. Sorry. I'm sure you didn't want to see the Zemo fist pump, right? My bad. My bad. <laughs> oh man, they had they had me. They had me. I thought we was ah oh, man. Jason from Polyhedral Paradise is in the building, my man. What is that? One of the Myrtle Maniacs. How are you doing? Hey, yo, I missed your stream last night. I missed your stream last night. Um, your D&D stream last night, man. Hey, and speaking of which, hey, yo, I heard you're going total magic the gathering, yo. Damn. When are we starting the magic the gathering stuff? Because it's way superior to D&D. &D. What? Uh, uh, oh, that, that was a joke? Oh, man. I thought you were serious. Oh, man, what? What happened there? What happened there? I thought you were serious. You're not. All right. Um. Let's see. More, more toxic man baby jokes. <laughs> Zemo dancing is the best part of 2021. So far it is. So far it is. Honestly. I don't know. Didn't Wanda have some great moments? Wanda had some great moments, didn't she? That and the Loki trailer. Yeah, that Loki trailer is fire, man. That Loki trailer is fire. Absolutely just great stuff, dude. I can't wait for that. Um, whoops. Whoops. Talking about Toxic Man, baby. <laughs> Big Stevie W, what is up, my brother? How are you doing? Another one of the Myrtle Maniacs. Yes. Oh, guys, I'm telling you. Look, I know. Look, I need to make a video about the, about the memberships and how we're kind of what our our goals 
for hitting each one. We recently, you know, we hit 20 not too long ago, uh, 20 channel members. Um, well, like I've kind of, as far as uh, our crowdfunding, the comic books, we've already exceeded that for the year already, according to the amount of channel members we have. Because there's been some, man, I'm telling you, man, like it's not, it's not me. There have been some fire books that have dropped on on um, on Kickstarter lately. Some some crowdfunding comic books that are absolutely fire. So we've over we've over went we've over went our budget. We've over went our budget with the channel membership thing. So so we got a lot of books that we've got that we've already like basically as we stand now with the memberships. You know, and thank you all so much. Uh, you can see all the all the channel members uh, their 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 names down there in the uh, description. Um, we, we kind of exceed you know our, our funding goal already but that's okay maybe by the end of the year we'll maybe we'll have uh more channel members maybe we'll have some other stuff going on in case uh in case, in case you guys haven't been paying attention like i said before make sure you go check out the discord go to the about section here on the channel here on youtube go to the about section go follow the discord i'm going to be doing some cool stuff in there it's going to be for Ma myrtle maniacs only some of the watch alongs are going to be myrtle maniacs only we're going to be doing some extra stuff over there now also it will be for Myrtle Maniacs only, or you could become a booster, uh, a, a server booster. I don't know what that's all about, but you know, it was one of the options that they gave me. So like if you boost, help boost the server, which helps give us uh, a better uh, image quality and a better audio quality, you also get to join in there too. So you don't just have to be a, you know, a channel member. You can also just be a booster server and partake in some of those watch alongs, right? Hey, 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 that sounds cool to me. Anyway. Um, because I didn't know anything about that until I started uh, poking around in there and then Patricia came in and dropped some knowledge on me and then my man Lord Vito came in and was very generous and boosted the server so we're, you know, we've got, for a, a, a little bit of time, we've got some nicer stuff. So, hey, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying thank you so much to all the Myrtle Maniacs out there who are helping, you know, helping making uh, some of this possible. Some of this possible, so uh, yeah, really good stuff, really good stuff. And I want to start doing more stuff over there through Discord, so we don't always have to do the live streams over here. Like some of these, some of these ones, the live streams here, I, I mean, are just the, the good stuff. But we'll be we'll be doing more stuff over there, so we're not doing everything over here because I can't do like the dragon, like the Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball watch along that we're gonna do. Um, I can't do that here and show you guys on screen the Dragon Ball. You know what I'm saying? Like we can't do that here. Where you can sit here and watch it. YouTube's going to be like, dude, what are you doing? Content claim, or actually, it'd be a, probably be a strike um, if, if I'm sitting there doing that, watching full episodes with you all. But we're going to do that on Discord, guys. I think we're going to pick maybe Saturday nights as a horror movie night. Um, yeah. And probably just at various different times throughout the week, uh, we'll o be over there and have some music playing and stuff as well for you guys to check out. Now, uh, again, the booster servers, like I said, if you don't want to become a channel member, the booster server thing is, is, is actually really cool because like I was listening to some of the audio quality the other week and I had all my audio settings pretty good on it as best as I could get them that I could tell. And it was like, even then it was still kind of like, I noticed it was kind of still going up and down a little bit. I'm telling you. Shout out to the booster servers too, which my man, my man Lord Vito also. Um, the membership link, uh, should be, I was going to say the membership link should be in the, uh, in the description, uh, Kendall, the membership link will be, uh, down in the, in the description, um, of, of this video, of this video it should be down there. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> yes. Wonder vision is great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Talking about a toxic man, baby. That's, I was going to say, that's going to be one of my, uh, that's going to be one of the, uh, the emojis we have next. Cause Jonathan and I, I thought Jonathan was right. I was asking the Myrtle maniacs the other day about emojis and what we should do. And the one that he su suggested is more like, uh, e facial emotes because, um, you know, some of the other ones are harder to see and I get it. And I, I was thinking for toxic man, baby, which one do I want to do? Which face do I want to do? Like, th is it this one or is it, or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll get one out. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll break out my Wolverine claws. <sighs> we'll do a Wolverine one. Bald Wolverine. He'll be Baldurine. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. I meant to do it last night, but the the but ran late on on show prep. Perhaps next week. Oh okay. Oh okay. So no no Magic the Gathering. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. That's funny. 
Um, Invincible is a 2021 highlight for uh, highlight for me. Um, I think Kirkman is one of the best storytellers of this generation. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've probably really got to get in and read some of his stuff. They've got those compendiums at my LCS. I probably just need to buy one and read it because, like, I'm watching this show so far and I'm like, eh, it's okay. Like, it's okay. I like it. It's not bad. I just, I don't know. So far, like, in the two episodes I've watched, I feel like it's one of those kinds of things, like, I felt like with the boys when I watched it, like, violence just to be violence and you know all this stuff just to me like like does it really like some of the stuff i think like is it really necessary and believe me i have no problem with blood and guts and violence and all that stuff but sometimes i really think like is it all that necessary just at times i'm not saying it can't be good but sometimes I watch some stuff and I feel like it's just about that. Just to do that. Just do this. Just be bloody, gory, and violent. Just like The Boys. That's how I felt about The Boys when I watched those first two episodes. I don't know. I don't know. But so far, the first two episodes that I've watched of Invincible, they've been pretty good. They've been pretty good. Can't wait. Uh, I want to watch more of the episodes. So I'm basically two episodes behind. But yeah, it's been it's been good. But I, other than that, like, I haven't any, really read any other Kirkman stuff um, at all. I mean, except for what's the, the new one that he's doing right now, the uh, oh, Firepower. I read the first volume of that. It was all right. It was all right. Um, the Discord, if the Discord breaks, Myrtle will fix it with some duct tape. Yeah, he will. <laughs> yeah, Myrtle will fix it with some duct tape. I think get, might get rid of my premium or vendor carding um, for my money uh, to you and Sam. Nice. Ah, uh, you don't have to do all that, Will Morgan. Uh, love Josh, but the business stream is uh, is nothing less than an, an embarrassing for me. Yeah, as I say, it's it's been a little bit different. It's, it's changed. It's changed a little bit. I'm telling you, reach out to him. Reach out to him. Let him know. Let him know. Because I thought last week's I thought last week's uh, business stream was really good. I thought it was really good. Uh, Norms to nerds, my man, Kendall. Thank you so much. Just joined at the digital copy. Thank you so much. And uh, like I said. We'll probably start doing those watch-alongs. I want to say maybe next Tuesday for like the Dragon Ball one. Um, and if there's a better time, because I, I can't really think of a better time. Like, I don't know. Tuesdays is kind of rough for me too because like that's the day. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll have to do Mondays. Maybe we'll do Mondays Dragon Ball. Because uh, Tuesdays for me is pretty busy like get, getting all the comic books read and getting ready uh, for new comic book day. So maybe we'll start doing the Dragon Ball watch-alongs on Mondays. We'll do horror on Saturdays. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Norman Sterners. Greatly uh, appreciate that. Um, the first one, because it looks like you're... Okay, yeah. Uh, that one? All right, yeah. I can do that. <laughs> the gore dies down. Oh, yeah. all right. Oh, and which one? And, oh, in uh, Invincible? Yeah, I kind of figured. I, I kind of figured. Like I, said, I only got two episodes in, though. I only, I'm only two episodes in, though. It's been pretty good, though, so far. It's been, you know what You know what it is? What, you know what I don't like? Is the music selection. Just because it's not music that I like. Like, you know, like, when I watch a movie, like, I want it to have, like, they did with those, some of those Dragon Ball Z movies. I want it to have, like, Deftones in there. I want it to have Pantera. Which, most of y'all at this point would probably say that's boomer music. <laughs> oh, Patricia just upgraded to the Myrtle variant. Patricia, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that. You've already been so supportive, Patricia. Uh, gory, sure, but it's the best storytelling and just the just the understanding of story and comics that amazes me. Yeah, like I said, I want to get in. I want to get. I want to get in and get those like those compendiums and like read those because like like I said, I'm not turned off by it at all. It's just like you know, like I'm waiting for it to really you know um, to 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 grab me and suck me in. I, is that. That sounds bad. That sounds bad. You know, you know what I mean, though. I think you know what I mean. <laughs> oh man, Did someone say Walking Dead. Yeah, I'm. You know, I've never read it. I've never watched it. I, I'm serious. Like seriously, the show. Never seen one episode. Not two seconds. Not two minutes. I mean, I know it. I mean, I've seen previews. I mean, I know the characters. I know the people in it and stuff. But never seen it. Never seen it. <laughs> but I know people. Love, but again. I'm not into the whole zombie thing neither though. I'm not into like I'm not into like zombies, vampires, magic, witches. I'm just not that I'm just not that I'm just not into all that stuff. It's gotta be really good, and I'm sure it probably is really good, but I, I just haven't given it a chance. I just haven't given it a chance. Um as far as walking dead. 
Uh, hey, it finally worked third time's a charm, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Um, uh, they get they get into yeah invisible. They get into plot. Nice, nice. Yeah, the music is loud. What music? What music is loud? What are you talking about? Is there music? Am I missing the music? What music? <laughs> what music? Oh. You know what? I wonder. No, it should it should be good. I don't know what music you're talking about. What music are you talking about? What music are you talking about? JBM, what is up? How are you doing? Thank you so much for being here. Haven't seen Invincible yet. Does it live up to the hype? Says Justin Simone. Um, like I, like I said, for me, I, so far I've thought it was okay. Um, I mean, could it be better? I mean, anything anything could be better. But so far, the first two episodes, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, I know most people are loving it though. Most people are absolutely loving it. Uh, Josh knows the business, but sometimes I ask real questions and uh, get embarrassed. I feel like a nerd in the locker room sometimes. Oh, yeah. No, nah, dude. I get you. I hear you. No, nah, you're good. <laughs> Remember when you were trolling Jason about Magic the Gathering? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Was that today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Magic the Gathering. Uh, same zombies. Yeah, zombies. Yeah, I'm not really into the zombie thing. Um, what? Uh, Dell... La Soul and Danger Mouse is that Del La Soul and Danger Mouse are in Invincible. Danger Mouse is in there, like Danger Mouse, like the Danger Mouse. Am I thinking of the? Am I thinking of the right Danger Mouse? Um, Del Del La Soul. Let me check that out. Um, you're right, not not your style. Uh, okay, yeah, Parker loves The Walking Dead. Yeah, a lot of people do. Yeah. Uh, one of the best comics written. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say yeah, because uh, look, look. You know a comic's good when they're right now. They are actually taking, and The Walking Dead was originally released all black and white. Right now they're actually going out there and reprinting all of them in color. All right, you don't do that and sell the comic books that they're doing that with, and make more money. Most people are gonna say, dude. I already bought this once. F you, I'm not buying it again. No, no, no. People are buying it. At my LCS when I'm sitting there helping them do the, 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 the pull lists and everything, there's actually people that on their pull list, they have every cover. They want every cover of the walking, like uh, issue number two just came out or or, yes, or, or today. I, I can't remember what it is. I'm just using that as an example. They want every cover of it. Right? You don't do that with a, with a book that's, you know, uh, 10, 15, 20 years old. And sell them still to the same people who bought them originally, just because it's in color, right? You don't do that because it's because it sucked. It's because it was good. And people want it. So yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it is great. Um, the, the music in Invincible when it when it's by itself. Oh, okay. The music is. I see what you're saying. Well, I literally have no idea about some of the stuff he discusses in the Prime stream, but that's why I love it. I learn a lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's almost like an anime. Um, well, I love the Walking Dead comics. Uh, well, I need to get some of those. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Like an American anime. Oh, are you talking about uh, American anime? Are you talking about Invincible? Is that what you're talking about there, uh, Kendall? I'm guessing that's what you're talking about. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I haven't really watched it. But anyway, guys, um, I guess that's, that's going to be our show for, uh, for today. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. We got uh, for all the super chats that, that we've got today. Uh, we had uh, Lord Vito sending in, uh, what, $25 in super chats this, today. We had RFS Dan with a $5 super chat. And uh, my man Kendall from Normies to Nerds just became uh, one of the Myrtle Maniacs. So, uh, hey, and guys, as far as I know, I think... I think pretty soon we'll probably be seeing uh, Myrtle here a little bit more regularly. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you all so much for being here today. So I guess tomorrow we're going to do the live stream. We'll get on there and do the, the DC round robin thing. Probably be towards the end of the show. Hopefully I should be uh, up and going by 8 a.m. tomorrow. Um, barring any, I don't know, anything, me being busy or <laughs> anything, life happening. But uh, thank you all so much for being here today. You all have a very good day, and we'll see you in the next video. Later.